Well hey everyone, how's it going? So in this video I'm going to be showing you how to replace the 194 incandescent bulb in your shifter housing in an 08 Grand Prix that applies to all of the 04 to 08 Grand Prix regardless of trim. Very easy to do. I'm going to be replacing it with a bright red LED. Will require some modification, so let's go ahead and get started. So the very, very first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set your parking brake. So in order to get the, um, the center console out, you're going to need to uh, move this uh, trim piece out of the way as well as this storage compartment. It's really easy to do. Just reach up underneath the storage compartment here and then pull towards you, okay? In this corner, put your thumb over your uh, keyhole cover, pull out some more. Okay, now that'll release this, and it also may release this at the same time. And then you just kind of go around like that, pulling towards you. And then you don't even need to disconnect any of the harnesses that are back there. All you have to do is set it aside just like that. It'll stay exactly where it's at, of course, depending on if you have an aftermarket radio or not. And then you'll notice that there are Phillips head screws right here. The way this is set up is uh, if you, say, want to get rid of the radio, you have to take this and this out. Fortunately, all we need to do is get rid of this um, storage compartment that's at the bottom. So you have two Phillips head screws that are here on the left and the right. Remove those, and this compartment should come right out. Okay, with the two screws out, we can go ahead and get rid of this compartment. But first, we have to go ahead and bring our shifter lever all the way back. Make sure your parking brake is set. Key the ignition to on. You can bring it all the way back, whether it be uh, one or manual tap shift, whatever. And uh, once that's back, then you can go ahead and just pull out the storage compartment and set it aside. And that allows us all this extra room here to be able to get this console out. Okay, so on the back side of your shifter lever, you'll notice that there is a Phillips head screw that is right here in the center, okay? You're going to want to go ahead and remove that. Now, be extra careful not to strip this screw, otherwise you will not be able to get your shifter lever off. So with the screw removed, we can go ahead and just take the shifter lever and just pull it right out, just like that. It just kind of slides out. It'll give us some extra room to be able to wiggle this around so that we can get it out. Okay, so we are looking underneath the driver's seat, and I have the seat all the way back as far as it'll go, and that gives us access to this bolt right here. There's four of these in total. There's one in front of the driver's seat, in front of the passenger seat on the opposite side, as well as you have two more that are back here. Now, in order to get to the two at the rear, you move the seats forward as far as you can go, and you can get access to those. These are 10 millimeter, and that's all that's holding the console to the floor. And now it's just as simple as lifting it out. What I usually do is I start in the front here and just lift up. You'll feel it release. The back may be a little bit tighter because of the seats being right here. The seats are going to rub up against the center console. But just give it a good tug and it should come right out just like that. Okay. Now, one thing to note, there is a harness that is right up underneath here. Okay. You can see it right here. Okay. It's really easy to disconnect. Uh, there is a indentation tab that's right here. Just push down on it or squeeze it and that will release the harness and then your console is free to be removed from the vehicle. Okay, so now we can go ahead and get the shifter housing out of the car. Very easy to do. On each side of the front here, you'll notice that there are these uh, tabs right here at the very bottom, okay? Just take it on both sides, lift up like that, all right? And then do the same thing on the other side, okay? That releases that. Then all you do is you move it forward, just like that. Now before you can get it off, underneath here is the bulb, okay? Or the, the bulb harness. Just take it, turn it clockwise. 
Okay, that'll release it, and then you can go ahead and bring the bulb out. Now I've already done the replacement on mine, so that's already completed, but now you can go ahead and lift this out. Then you can clean this up and make the modifications necessary for the new uh, LED. Alrighty, so here's the shifter housing, and uh, on the bottom down here, uh, you'll notice that there are two of these retainer tabs. Basically, just take a flat blade screwdriver and kind of wedge it in there and bring it upward, and do the same thing for the other side. You want to be able to wedge your flathead screwdriver inside here and then bring it upward. Try to be gentle because uh, you don't want this uh, plastic to actually break. Once you've done that, then just lift up on it, and then on this side here, there are two little circular things here. You can actually just kind of pull up with your hands, your fingers that is, and this part looks like this. This is the, the, the cover that moves along with um, uh, your shifter, as well as this portion right here is actually what lights up the indicator of what gear you're actually in. Uh, so light shines through this, uh, below this actually, and lights up you know, which gear you're actually in. Uh, so that's what that does. You can go ahead and slide that away. Okay. Then what you have here is you have this plastic piece that diffuses the light. So it actually blocks light. You can see how it gets lighter and lighter as it goes outward. The, uh, the incandescent bulb is actually right up underneath here. And to keep bright spots from showing through here so that the, uh, the light is uh, level or equal throughout the whole thing, they, uh, they put this here so that the strongest light is actually blocked the most. And then the light that's furthest away, which would be park and, in my case, manual, uh, it actually sees the most amount of light. So it sits like this underneath here and it allows it to disperse the light equally throughout the entire um, uh, housing, okay? So we're actually going to be getting rid of this. And the reason is because this LED here, you can see it's a really good size LED. So we actually have a wide angle here. And the only thing that we're going to be doing any different is we're going to be putting some, uh, some uh, masking tape over the top of this to keep the brightness down on the neutral reverse and drive okay and I'll show you that later but we can go ahead and we can get rid of this now at the same time what you'll notice is that this is obviously all black on the inside this is where the bulb sits right here in the middle okay so you can see the hole it actually comes up through if we were to just install the bulb, uh, the, excuse me, the LED, if we were just to install this LED here, the problem is is that black does not reflect light, it absorbs it, okay? So in order to increase the intensity of this light to make sure that it's actually going to be bright enough to light everything up here, what we need to do is we need to paint the inside of this portion right here, okay? And we need to paint the inside of this portion right here, all right? So what we're going to be using is this gloss uh, enamel paint. This is a white enamel paint, and we're going to just going to spray a few coats on. Before we do that, though, we're going to have to get some uh, painter's tape, and we're going to need to cover up this portion right here. I also want to make sure no paint is right here in this area, because that's where this thing rubs up against. And what I don't want is for the paint to start chipping away. So I'm going to cover this portion right here just where this um, uh, plastic piece actually rubs up against this okay and then obviously I'm gonna do the same for here I want this top part here to be covered up because again I don't want the paint to start chipping away so we're just gonna be painting the inside here alright so I'll go ahead and get this taped up so you can see it now I should mention that before you start taping this off clean the inside of these parts out really really well um, just a uh, damp washcloth and just clean everything out, let it dry, make sure there's no water, and then you can start taping everything off. 
Also, I would like to note that you don't necessarily need to use a white enamel, okay? Uh, you can actually use a, a silver high reflective, uh, something like that. What you need is something that's going to be reflecting the light all around. Either white or a reflective silver will actually work as well. Alrighty, so you can see that I have everything taped off now. Again, taping this portion off, you know, this long portion here where this piece here rubs up against that is strictly optional. It's peace of mind for me. I just want to make sure that the, the paint isn't going to start chipping off. Uh, so that's why I taped that off. I want to make sure that nothing is going to be rubbing against the paint. So you can see where I've taped this portion off. So we're going to be painting the inside here. And then most importantly, you need to tape off your indicators because they're red. And if you paint over those, you obviously won't get any light coming through, which would make this whole thing pointless. So we're going to paint just the inside right here. Okay. And then obviously we're going to be painting the inside here. So when that light bulb sticks out, it comes in through here, the white around here is going to reflect it in all different directions. That way it's nice and bright throughout every single one of the indicators, no matter what gear you're in. Okay, so I did two coats and let it uh, dry overnight. So this is ready. You can, you know, you can obviously see my uh, attention to detail here. It really doesn't matter uh, just as long as most of this is white so that the light can be reflected around. I can go ahead and clean this up. You've got a little piece here where the indicator is at and it kind of slides out like so okay and you can actually wash this in water there's nothing metallic on here at all so wash it up really good that'll make that look really nice and then i'm just going to use a, a damp uh, rag and uh, wipe this down All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the LED that I'm actually going to be using. This is a very large LED. Um, it's you can see how many red LEDs this this obviously has on it. It's very bright, and it's uh, taller than the uh, the incandescent bulb, but it still will fit just fine. So you can get these in any color you want. I think I paid a couple of bucks for this thing uh, in a two pack. You can get these in any color you want. However, you need to note that the uh, shift indicators that are actually on the housing themselves are in fact red. So if you got one of these in blue, then you're not going to get a blue uh, shine through because they use a red film over the top of the indicators in order to get the exact light that they want. So keep that in mind. You can use different colors. In our case, uh, I'm just going to be using red. So this thing is incredibly bright and uh, it's, you know, like I said, it's, it's really nice. It's a 194, 168 bulb. I got it on Amazon again for a couple of dollars. And, uh, so it's, it's a formidable little, uh, uh, LED. Okay, so with the surrounding light and this camera, it's not doing it justice. It's a really deep red and it's quite bright. And this is only 12 volts. I'm only putting 12 volts through this, so... When you start your car up, it's actually going to be uh, a little bit brighter because it's going to be pumping uh, between 12.5 and, and 14.5 and volts through this, so it will be a little bit brighter. But uh, yeah, it's it looks really nice. It's just uh, it's just a really bright LED. All right, so now it's time to put everything back together. So if you took this apart and cleaned it, uh, the little notch that sticks out actually goes uh, upward so you'll see the overhang here uh, there's only one way to actually put this in so just kind of bring it inward okay so that's in place now we go ahead and put this back on so it slides through these two notches right here on the side okay and then you do the same thing for the other side looks like that all right. Now the indicator has to be towards the bulb side in order for it to be actually lit. Now the last thing we can do is we can go ahead and put the top on. The top only goes on one way. You've got your two 
nubs there's one right there and then that matches this one right here so you just kind of bring it inward and snap it into place on both sides then bring that all the way down push it in and this should move freely back and forth so now we go ahead and get it out to the car Okay, so you can see that I've already modified mine. I've already installed the new uh, LED. But you will have to remove the old incandescent bulb. I recommend that you use gloves, grippy gloves of some kind, maybe even rubber gloves. And you just grab a hold of the bulb and you pull it out of the slot. Don't squeeze too hard. You don't want to break the bulb, but it should come out. You may have to wiggle it back and forth until it comes out. Once you have the old incandescent bulb out, then you can go ahead and install the new LED like the one I've got shown here okay so optionally if you want to avoid a bright spot which would be right, right near the neutral drive area if you want to avoid a bright spot because you can see that this shoots out a lot of light upwards you can use a piece of tape um, masking tape and you can just put it over the top of this. Uh, you can see mine's got probably about, oh, I don't know, maybe uh, 20,000 miles on it. And you can see that this is what it looks like after it's done. It's fine. It's not going to burn through or anything. Um, the LEDs don't get that hot. So anyway, that's optional if that's something you want to do. All right, so getting the shifter housing back on is very straightforward. Just take it and slide it over like that. Then get your bulb and lock it into place. Remember, it goes clockwise, and then you turn it counterclockwise. Okay, just like that. So it's locked into place. Then what you do is you take your um, shifter housing and you slot it into those two slots right here. Bring it towards you. Okay, once it's locked, then you just push down you can uh, move, bring your fingers out like this push down and it should lock into place just like that okay we are in the car right now you can't see anything but we're gonna do a quick test to make sure that everything lights up just fine and it sure does it looks really good actually uh, the camera is not doing it justice, never does, but it's a nice bright red. And the great thing is, is that when you're sitting in the car, it's not going to shine all in your face. It looks really, really good. I uh, really like it. And you can see that the intensity is obviously a little bit more here in this area. Again, that's because the LED is right behind this spot here. So this one is a little bit brighter. So, since everything is working, it's bright, looks great, we can go ahead and start putting everything back together. Okay, so we're back in the car again. We've got the uh, center console cleaned up, and the easiest way to put this back in, you don't even have to put it in drive if you don't want to, or all the way back. The easiest way to put this back in is to bring it in through the uh, rear seats, okay? And you want to bring it down just a little bit. And if you lift up on it, you can actually bring it past the shifter knob. All right. Now, before you set it in, you want to get your harness here hooked up. Okay. So, first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to find the harness. We're going to go ahead and reconnect the harness. And make sure it's down here in the middle out of the way so nobody sees it. And then again, just lift up slide it in it goes in actually fairly easy okay now again there's retainers underneath here that uh, lock it into place you just basically push down until you feel it lock in okay okay so now that uh, we have the center console in place we can go ahead and get our compartment back in place just set it in and uh, line it up with the two uh, tabs that are on the top get your uh, two Phillips head screws
and to get our shift lever back in uh, real easy to do just basically slide it down you'll feel it lock in place and then it won't be allowed to turn okay then you get your um, your small screw that goes in the bag be careful not to lose this thing which yes I have done before just reach in there and again it's the opposite of what you would think because you're looking at it from an opposite direction and just tighten it down again doing it with the console in place and the shifter not all the way back you're going to need a small Phillips head, a short Phillips head screwdriver to be able to do that. Otherwise, you've got to bring your shift lever all the way back. So now we can go ahead and get the, uh, the radio trim piece back in place. Just snap it in. Real easy to do. And then your um, ignition key cover snap that back into place it can only go in one way alrighty so all four of my bolts are now back in and we have completed this project the center console was removed it was cleaned thoroughly and now it's back in so uh, we are done if you have any questions, of course, you can let me know, and uh, take care.